Women Taking the Lead, episode 102. And these days, what makes me a better leader is a practice of constant gratitude. Because it makes me intensely aware of all the wonderful things at my life and my work. It changes me and it makes me infinitely more tuned and empathetic. It makes me focused on what really matters to me and to my clients. Hello, my name is Jody Flynn and welcome to Women Taking the Lead, where we are all about creating blasts of inspiration to help you overcome self-doubt so you can lead with confidence, integrity, and a sense of humor. Head over to womentakingthelead.com to get the solutions to your top five leadership challenges. Now, your future awaits, so let's get started. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. I'm here with Marina Darlow, who is a systems pro and a productivity expert. She sees her job as helping impact-driven entrepreneurs get 10 to 20 more productive hours a week, stop leaking money, and prevent stress-fueled breakdowns. An engineer by training, Marina came to a realization a couple years ago, working for a conglomerate is not as inspiring as she wants her life work to be. The quest for inspiration brought her to found Vision Framework, a company that builds small purpose-driven businesses from the inside, helping entrepreneurs run their companies with ease by putting effective, easy to use, and yep, fun systems in place. Marina, I love that. And that's just a little intro for everyone. So tell us more about you and your own humble beginnings. Hi, Jody. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm really excited to be on this particular podcast. It's weird to tell about myself. I'm not used to it, but I'll try. I had about a decade of corporate large scale project management under my belt. And at that point in my life, I was very disconnected and uninspired by the stuff we were launching, not to mention extremely hard pressed to figure out the office politics. This is probably a time to mention that I moved a country um, a couple years before the big switch. So the whole corporate culture was very foreign to me. Uh, and then a point came when I went public on Facebook with the announcement that read something along those lines. The chapter of project management in my life is over, exclamation mark. <laughs> and I meant it. I was drained. I was unhappy. Uh, people around me were unhappy. And I had a baby that needed a mentally healthy mom. So great. I went out with this announcement. But the truth is that I was lost. I didn't know what else I could do. My husband was in school. So stay-at-home mom was not an option. And I picked up a kind of undemanding part-time project management job and started figuring out what it is that I want to do with my life. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, you know, was probably when the business was conceived. Mm. And Marina, you mentioned that um, you had moved countries before you made this big shift into corporate. Where were you coming from? So I worked corporate jobs in Israel, and then I moved to the States and found a job in a slightly higher position. I still It's still um, a mystery why they decided to hire me and what they thought. Uh, it was a very sh steep learning curve. Yes, I bet it was. And ultimately, you realized that that environment wasn't for you. It sounds like it was like sucking the life out of you. It was not work that inspired you, energized you. And you made the decision without anything really lined up yet that you weren't going to do it anymore. I was definitely drained, as you summed up. At some point, the decision was made for me with a large corporate layoff. So that was a blessing in disguise. Mm. Yes, I've had a couple of those. <laughs> for all of you out there who, you know, if you lose your job and it feels like a disaster and you don't know when, where your next rent is going to come from, it might be a blessing. Mm. And Marina, you're now in a position where you're helping other businesses and entrepreneurs to, you know, hit the easy button, right? Taking things that seem very complicated and overwhelming and are taking a lot of time and creating systems for them so they have more ease in their life, they're more productive. And it sounds awesome. It must be so gratifying. 
to work with them. And I can hear the confidence in your, like when you tell the story of where you were before, like you sound tired when (laughs) you're telling it, but you and I have chatted and talked about the work that you do and you're very passionate about it. And you're so lit up. I know you've gained tons of confidence over time, um, doing the work that you're doing now, but take us back to a time when you were playing small and you may not have been aware of it at the time, Share with us that story and the lessons you've learned. Oh, so first of all, thank you for giving me this vote of confidence. Um, Making systems work for small businesses that change the world in their own way is the most fulfilling job I ever had in my life. It's amazingly energizing, but it didn't didn't happen overnight. Um, And when you ask for this, tell us about your plain small moment. And I'm thinking, well, just one. (laughs) <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, I was playing small for a long time. Uh, remember I said I was lost. Mm. Eventually the confusion was so high. I signed up for um, kind of a coaching career, coaching leadership program, um, to figure out what it is that I want to accomplish in life and who I am, what am I made of? Um, and at some point, um, a friend in the program, needed help with pricing and scheduling. And, um, you know, I figured it out, helped her do it. And she's, you know, she was very happy. And she says, Marina, I want to send clients to you. I want to send some of my clients. She was a therapist. And I more or less had a panic attack. I was like, no, who am I? I like people who run companies, people who have clients are smart and confident people. And I'm nowhere near that. This is not who I am. Like, don't even think about it. And it went for a while. I literally had, you know, panic attacks when you can't breathe. Uh, But, you know, a couple people after that asked for my help and I, you know, volunteered it to them basically, step by step, the sense of, oh, this is something I could do. And it's kind of unique. Not everybody can do this. Um, That would finally made me found Vision Framework. You know, I often say that it's usually the things that we're just so good at, right? It's so easy for us that we undervalue it. And it's not till other people go crazy over it, right? They just say, oh my gosh, you're so talented. You're so good at this. That, And, you know, at first we think they're crazy or they're just flattering us, you know, just trying to make us feel better. But the reality is it's you know, I call them our superpowers, right? Because we're, <laughs> we're, we're just so good at it that we take it for granted and we assume that everyone else is good at it too, but it's not true. And if you can identify those things that other people go on and on about that you can do easily, you know, and, and complimenting you and, and saying how wonderful you are at it, that's how you can recognize your superpower. And that's usually worth money, to other people, whether you're a business owner or you're in the office environment, it's a value that you bring to the table that you'll get paid for. It's exceptionally true. And I can relate deeply to that point where you think something, you know, is so natural for you. It's so easy. You assume without giving it a second thought that it's really easy for everyone. You know, it's easy to breathe. People breathe unless you have severe asthma. Uh, it's easy for you to run Excel spreadsheets because it's just easy, right? Mm-hmm. And when somebody says, Marina, here's blowing my mind. I'm like, she's been sarcastic. Mm. So yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's a personal development journey to realize that your talents are actually exactly that. They're talents. They're not something that's natural for everyone. Right. Right. And because you didn't have to work hard for it, it's hard to identify. But you and I have just named some things that people can be listening for, you know, other people saying to them so that they'll know what their superpowers are and they can leverage that. Like that's those are skills you can put on a resume. Those are skills you can put on your your website if you're a business owner. Like I can do this easily. This is not hard for me. I love doing it, you know, and other people will go, that's the skill that we need. That's what we need. Oh, absolutely. You know, the things that you say just highlight that you must be an amazing coach. 
Ah, you see you. right to the heart <laughs> of the matter and pinpoint you know, things that are hard for probably every professional out there, especially mm-hmm. if you happen to be a woman, because we're in a way, I think, conditioned to think, um, how would I put it in a nice and polit- politically correct way? We're conditioned to not um, show off our worth. It's almost mm-hmm. considered unwomanly. Yes. Now I so get that. Good for you that you're, you know, shine in a spotlight on that matter. Thank you. It's my superpower. So thank you for that. <laughs> All right, Marina, now share with us a time in your journey when you had a wake-up call. Take us back to that moment and share with us the steps that you took that led to your success. One of my favorite moments, probably because it had such a stark contrast in such a short time, um, about five months into opening my business, I was at a swanky hotel room in New York, just finished an amazing workshop by David Allen, who happens to be one of my gurus. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm laying there in bed, staring at the ceiling and thinking, wow, it's been five months. And I set a certain goal for myself at the beginning of the year when I just started to have um, an X amount of clients to sign up for my programs. And I exceeded that goal. And that was so incredibly unbelievable. That was this feeling of, oh my goodness, it's me who did it. I, it's better than any performance review. It's me who made this a reality. It's me who made the change. This euphoria helped me through many ups and downs over the years of entrepreneurship. I don't want to give an impression that we're only ups. It's, uh, the progress is not linear by any um, yardstick. But that realization that I can make my own reality, here is the numerical evidence. That was amazing. As for how I made it happen, um, at the time I was working in a small local market, so it was a word of mouth. It was a willingness to help people, to go out and network, to share my expertise with anyone who would be interested, and in general, just to be very, very available and do my best work. Um, And the sense, the power of realization that I can create change this is probably one of the biggest drivers in my business. You know, we all start our businesses or we all go to work in a way to change the world in some small ways. And this understanding that you're capable of changing the world, of bending their reality to your standards it's one of the most empowering, thing, empowering things that I've ever experienced. Marina, that was great. And for the, anyone listening, if you missed any of that, like you checked out or you're driving and, and somebody crossed the road or something, go back about a minute and listen to her answer all over again. I loved that because you started off with that moment where you were, even though quietly, even, if it, even though it was like a moment by yourself, you were celebrating having hit a milestone and a goal and letting it soak through you, like letting that emotion wash over you of, I did it. Like I did this. And that's really important. I think on any journey we have in our career or entrepreneurial, and then going back to, and thank you for kind of breaking down those things that you did that led to you hitting that goal. And what I heard you saying was being generous like look, looking for ways to help other people, getting out there and networking and connecting with people, which sharing with them what you have going on and what you can do for them um, and just making it happen and knowing that what you were doing was making a difference and was changing the world. Because I think sometimes we get disconnected from how what we're doing in this moment connects to our larger goals or the, the change we want to make in the world. But when we're very present to that, 
it energizes the work that we're doing. Instead of feeling tedious and doldrum, it feels purposeful and enlivening. So Marina, thank you for that. That was amazing. Thanks. And what I, this is a good segue, what I want everyone to get is there's no one way to lead. We're all different as people and we're all different as leaders. So we're going to lead differently. So Marina, how would you describe your leadership style? You know, it's a really, really good question. It truly makes me think, you know, we don't have a lot of opportunity necessarily to reflect upon how we lead, like what is unique about the way I do stuff. Um, So thank you for giving me this moment of self-reflection. I'm a big believer in independence coupled with support. What does it mean? Um, I believe a person should learn how to do stuff herself. I can guide you, but you will have to do the work. You will have homework. You will have to figure out by yourself how to use the tools that I give you. Yes, I will hold your hand and I will be available for every question, but the focus should be on your independence. The goal is for you to learn and to lead by yourself. Um, You know, I first read it a way long time ago in Tim Ferriss' four-hour work week. He says, it's amazing how someone's IQ will double as soon as you give them the responsibility and indicate that you trust them. And it really encapsulates the way I see leadership. It's you who should do the work. I'm there to show you how, but I won't tell you where to go. I will teach you and then I will set you to your, you know, on your way. That's, that's my way of empowering. Yeah, I don't know many people who would not want a, a leader who would work with them in that fashion, where you're you're given trust and support all at the same time. So that's awesome. And Marina, what is one thing you're working on right now that you're really excited about? Uh, so we just recorded a podcast miniseries with an amazing um, ADHD coach. So it's meant for people who are global creatives people who have incredible, incredible frenzied mind, flame with ideas. Um, And we're talking about systems that support this kind of a frenzy visionary. So Cameron Gott, uh, my partner in crime, coaches ADHD coaches and works a lot with global creatives and I do systems. So we fuse our knowledge and our experiences to have these podcast, um, three episodes where we talk about if you're a global creative, what is the best way for you to put your ideas to life? What systems do you need to make it actually possible to execute upon your incredible vision? So stay tuned. Oh, yeah. And when you have the link to that, please send it to me right away. I want to put that in the show notes because I do know business owners who have ADD or ADHD and they are global visionaries. I would definitely describe them that way. Um, and I know the frustration that they feel at times where they, when they feel like they're getting in their own way. Um, And if they had the systems, I mean, for some of them, they've developed some of their own systems over time, but they're, they're not flawless. They're not perfect. So I know they definitely be interested in getting more ideas, more systems that can help them, you know, um, manifest what's going on in their head out into the world. So that's incredible. Absolutely. And we also talk, you know, like when people talk systems, uh, the global creative, especially tends to envision something rigid and something technical. Mm -hmm. But there is a big emotional component to any system, which is crucial and not often talked about. And we touch on that subject, like what are the emotional sides of having a system? What are the benefits? What are the emotional needs when it comes to creating a system? And I think that what makes our podcast really valuable. Hi. I'm definitely interested in that. And I think you're right, too, because I definitely have a lot of systems in my business. And as you were saying that, I was trying to think about, like, just for instance, the system I have to prepare my guests. 
to be ready for when we're going to do the interview. And there is a lot of emotion that goes into that. I want my guests to feel supported. I want them to feel that they have been informed and that they've had time to prepare and be ready so that this experience is as comfortable to them as possible. And that's something I like to provide for people regardless of the situation. But for this system, for my guests, that's definitely a big part of it. So if any piece of the system fell away, it would hurt me. (laughs) Like, not, not physically, but I would be upset, you know, that my guests were not getting that support. You know, I have to say, I've done a few podcasts over the last couple of weeks. And you know, I had different experiences with interviewers and with the prep for the podcast. Yours is probably the best. It's so all encompassing. It's so easy to go step by step. I truly felt that I have everything ready. It was just a super smooth and very uplifting experience. So thank you for that. And I want you to know that the work that you put into the system and the system itself is very much appreciated. I mean it with every syllable. <laughs> right. That's really awesome. And Marina, you probably, I don't know about you, but um, I mean, you're the expert on systems, but I know when I'm creating a, sy- a system, I'm starting with what kind of experience I want to create usually for the most part. You know, if it involves us, if it's a system that's going to touch other people, I always want to know what experience it's going to create. And actually, if I take a step back, I I want to know the experience I'm trying to create for other people as well as myself. Um, And so that's when I kind of dive into what's the emotional impact of the system. So you've given me a lot to think about. I mean, there was something I was doing unconsciously. I wasn't very conscious about it. So now I think I'm just going to go back through a lot of the systems I've created to kind of be like, which ones are really working and which ones aren't working? Because that might be one of the elements that is missing. Um, So thank you. Oh, wow. You know, first of all, but I'm happy that something that I said was useful to you personally. Um, You know, I kind of look up to you. I think you're doing an amazing job in the world. So glad that I had something valuable to contribute. And I really love your perspective, how you say I start designing a system with experience in mind, because it made me think my approach is kind of different. In a way, um, when I design a system, and I usually design a system for someone else, but it's for them, mm-hmm. uh, not for, you know, a client, the user is, you know, I start with what hurts. Mm. Yeah, it, you know, it does have something in common with the general experience. Yes. But I tend to start with the biggest pain point. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, which is coming at it like in a very similar way, because the hurt is the experience that they're having. True, true. Right. This is painful. (laughs) We have to change this. Yes. (laughs) So that's (laughs) our focus. (laughs) Yeah, like bring the focus there. And that's how you know how to make changes. And oftentimes when people are are stuck, like they don't know what business idea, you know, to move forward with, or, you know, what product or service they want to create in their business. Oftentimes, the question, you know, to ask is, well, what's missing or what's painful in your life? Because if you're feeling that, then other people are probably feeling that as well. So, oh, we could go on and on. (laughs) (laughs) So (laughs) let me transition because now we're going to go into the leadership roundup. So tell us, Marina, what is one practice that you have that helps to make you a better leader? An excellent question. Um, So for a leader, there are a couple of completely non-negotiable qualities that one must possess. And I believe that there's focus Uh, determination and empathy. And these are the basics. So you can't lead if you lack any of those. And these days, what makes me a better leader is a practice of constant gratitude because it makes me intensely aware of all the wonderful things that my life and my work, it changes me and it makes me infinitely more tuned and empathetic. It makes me focused on what really matters to me and to my clients. So yeah, gratitude. That's what I do on a daily basis. I love that. And what is one book that you would recommend to a woman to help her develop her leadership? Oh, I'm going to sound 
ridiculously cliche on this one, uh-huh. but I'm currently reading Rising Strong by Brene Brown, and I'm loving it. It has every ingredient to um, both take you through the hard parts and uplift you and make you appreciate the wonderful parts. She is so deeply personal and she talks about such, on one hand, very common experiences, but on the other hand, um, they're kind of essential. Like we all fail. We all feel shame. And if we don't deal with it the right way, we get stuck in it. We essentially stop taking action. And she teaches in extremely relatable words, uh, drawing on her own experiences and on stories, how to get past that. Once you experience something painful, which will inevitably happen. If, if it doesn't happen, you're not paying attention. Um, how do you get out of this painful experience and how do you leverage it to make you stronger? Um, she is one of my favorite business related authors, I would say. Yeah, hands down. I have to agree with you there. And you know, what's really interesting. I was thinking about her over the weekend, actually just yesterday, because somebody recently had asked me, you know, well, you have this podcast, Women Taking the Lead. Who are the women out there that you look up to as leaders? Mm -hmm. And it made me pause for a little while. And at first I was like, do I not look up to women as leaders? Which is totally not true. But where I got stuck in the question was I was trying to think of CEOs, like high powered CEO women out there who are my personal heroes. And I drew a blank. And then yesterday it occurred to me, I was like, oh, why didn't I say Brene Brown? I love Brene Brown. I look up to her. And it's Brene Brown and some other women too. But what I love about them and how I look up to them as leaders is they're so authentic and sharing their own personal stories, right? Not, Not so much that you feel uncomfortable right? But their stories, they, they resonate. You know, when she's sharing, I've read, I've read that book too. And when she was sharing some of her stories, I was like, oh, I've been there, not in that exact situation, but I've been there in that moment where I was having that feeling. Yes. And she, she makes the story in such a way that you believe that it happened, that, you know, she's not just giving you an example. She's mm-hmm. shown you very raw a uh, very real life experience and and the implicit bravery in exposing herself in this way that's something that's inspiring on its own right mhm absolutely oh so good and marina what advice would you give your younger self <sighs> you know that question that really made me pause Because my first reaction was none, just, you know, your younger self was fine. You got screwed up, you know, you screwed up later in life Um, when you started with your, you know, when you went on with your uninspiring job. But I think upon second thought, the advice I would give myself, not just my younger self, but in general, make mistakes, make as many mistakes as you can. Don't be afraid to act. Pain is okay. Shame is okay. The only thing that is not okay is staying put out of fear. So I guess, I guess that. Make mistakes. (laughs) There's the perfectionist in me (laughs) that wish I had given myself that advice when I was younger as well. Like, They don't mean as much as we think they mean when you make a mistake, when you look foolish. They're actually incredible opportunities for learning. So, oh, man, you are dropping value bombs left and right. (laughs) (laughs) So, Marina, share with us a success quote or a mantra and why it has meaning for you. Um, I think the mantra that guides me and my clients is that change is possible. 
It sounds very um, cliche, but when people come to me, they come to me because they're stuck and overwhelmed and they're a hot mess. Otherwise, people usually don't like to deal with their systems. You, know, you only go to a dentist when you can't stand the pain. Mm-hmm. And I'm kind of in this similar uh, field of work in that sense. And what I really want to instill in my clients, as in myself, that change is possible. We can change our reality. We can change, you know, using the tools that are right for the situation, uh, changing our thoughts, going through the steps, change will happen. That's it. And Marina, lastly, what is the best way for this community to connect with you? Um, You can go to my website. It's www.vision-framework.com. You can download my free guide to the application that saved me about 10 to 20 hours a week. It's right there on the website. You can read my blog, which also right there. It's at www.vision-framework.com. You can email me on the contact page. You can, if you want to chat, you can hit a button and schedule a chat. Um, It's my virtual home. So please Mm. come and visit me there. Yes. And for those of you listening, if you are on the go or driving or anything and you can't write all this down, don't worry because you can find all the links and resources shared in this episode at womentakingthelead.com or you can use the short link, which is womentl.com. Marina, thank you so much for taking the time to inspire and enlighten us. We are all better for having met you. Well, thank you, Jody. It was a pure pleasure to be on the podcast. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining me on Women Taking the Lead. Were you inspired to take some action today, but maybe don't know where to start? Or maybe you have so many great ideas, you can't decide where to focus your attention. Don't let stress or overwhelm stop you from having the career, the business, or the life you want to live. Head over to womentakingthelead.com forward slash coaching, or use the short link womentl.com forward slash coaching to sign up for a consultation with me. And to strengthen you on your leadership journey, I'd like to send you off with a quote from Marianne Williamson, so here goes. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Again, thank you for joining me, and here's to your success.